Amen. Get this microphone on. Well, y'all got it on. You playing games with me back there. <laughs> What's your name? Dimitri, Denutre, De Deontay, D'Angelo, Dante, Devon. Well, it's a bunch of black names running through my mind right now. You should stand up in my church, try to read them cards on Sunday morning. You say, I read good. It don't matter if you can read good. Black folk try to find the weirdest way to spell your name. That's to give the teachers a hard time for the rest of your life. Hey, aren't you glad God knows all of our names? He doesn't care about what color we are. It really doesn't matter. It's all about whether he, we've been washed in his blood. Amen. Amen. And so I'm so thankful for the opportunity to be here. Hey, listen, your pastor's uh, going on record about praying for me, loving me. Let me just go on some records then to how much I love the Shutt family. I, I watched your pastor as the youth pastor here for many years. God's hand was on him then. And I knew that God had great things to do with him and his family. And I'm just 100% behind him, have had the opportunity to be in this building. Many, many times, someone was reminding me the last time I was here, I guess we were at a t under a tent. Yes. Is that right? And uh, somebody remember that. Who said yes, sir? Oh, you did? Somebody else said yes, sir? That way back there? Yeah, I thought that was you. Make me feel right at home. <laughs> and you say, yes. And, and by the way, back there in that interpreting, you're not going to bother me. I do well with noise. So, so don't you worry about me about that. I'm just glad that somebody here is hearing the word of God in his own language. So we give the glory for that. Thank you for being here. We thank God for interpreters and what a blessing they are. But I love your pastor and his dear wife. And we've had some wonderful times together. And what a blessing he's been. They have slated him over the years when we're at the summit to interpret for me. And uh, particularly when, uh, before COVID hit, COVID has done a work on my lungs, so I, I, can't, I can't scream like I used to, you know? So I'm sitting in this stool, which I've done for the last couple of years, which is an adjustment for me altogether. But nonetheless, the word of God ain't about my screaming, it's about God's substance, amen? And uh, so your pastor has signed for me over the years and they put him through that grueling responsibility and he's done it with such grace and uh, such skill. And I believe every person ought to be able to hear the word of God in his own language. I certainly believe that. And that applies to the deaf, the Hispanic or anyone else. And so I appreciate the shuts, Brother Bill and Miss Nikki and their family and all of you that are here tonight. Thank you for being here at Bible Baptist Church. I've been saying this here the last couple of years. It took me a year to get back on the road, and a little bit over a year, <clears throat> I went in the hospital in March of 2020, and I went out to preach the first time in late June of 2021, and I really was kind of dealing with some trepidation, some trepidation about when to go out, a little, little fear, a little anxiety, having been in so long, and you know, all of this, what the doctor was saying, and you don't need to get sick, and you got to be careful, and all of those things, and all along, knowing God had called me to do something. You can't keep a good dog down, all right? You, uh, God put preaching in my heart, and I knew I needed to be doing what God was calling. I wanted to do it wisely. And so been out and going and, and preaching, and I thank the Lord for it. A young man who's been saved recently, didn't grow up in a Christian home. We were traveling together. I was speaking Saturday before last, and he asked me an interesting question. He said, how do you know what church to go to? And I said, you know what? I really can't give you an answer for that. Because in the ministry, sometimes you get calls from people you know. Sometimes you get calls from people you don't know. I typically preach at churches of like faith that believe like we believe. But it's hard to figure out on a Monday in October and a Tuesday in November where exactly I'm supposed to be on that Monday and Tuesday night. I'll tell you how I don't figure it out. I don't figure it out on the size of a church. Hey, we don't get into big churches and little churches. They're all God's churches. Amen. Amen. So I don't figure out the size of the church or necessarily the location or, or how well known the pastor is. I had one preacher apologize. We want to ask you to preach, but we're not big enough. I said, if you're God's church, you're big enough. And so I don't think about it that way. I just pray and ask the Lord to send me the right place. Sometimes the secretary says, this is on the schedule, this is on the schedule, and you've got to decide which one you're going to go to or decide no. And I just pray and somehow I just ask the Lord, show me where you want me to be. Sometimes he wants me to be at home. Amen. 
And uh, sometimes it's just, um, no, I tell the secretary, I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm just going to stay at home and, and do what I need to do. But over the years, somehow, and I give God all the glory for it, no skill of mine, God has managed to put me exactly where I'm supposed to be. Not just for what I have for them, but for what they have for me. Now, I can't explain all of that. I don't have the data to prove it. I don't have a meter up here that goes off in my mind or some buzzer or some ding, 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 ding that goes off when I'm in the right church. But I can just tell you, somehow the Holy Spirit bears witness every time I show up where God sends me that you're in the right place. And uh, I won't tell you, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what's happening in your life. I don't know what's happening in this church. I don't know what's happening in York, PA. I just know I pull up in the parking lot tonight. I parked in my park and I walked in the building and I knew as soon as I got in here on October 31st, 2022, tonight, I'm exactly where God wants me to be. And I won't tell you I feel good about that. I'm glad to be where God wants me. Do you realize there's a lot of places on planet Earth where we could be tonight? Hey, and by the way, while I'm thinking about it, I'm no prophet and I'm no psychic, but I'm going to go out on a limb. I'd say you're exactly where you're supposed to be tonight too. And I'm glad God's got something for us. We're living in perilous times. The devil is busy. I've never seen the devil working like he's working. He's trying to destroy homes. He's trying to divide churches. He's trying to confuse people. We're watching him pull off some stuff he's never pulled off before. He's always been a liar. He's always been a murderer. He ain't going to get better. Sometimes we just need to tell him he's a liar. And, uh, you know, some people say, I just have to tell the devil, get thee behind me. It brings me to remembrance about a lady that was having trouble spending too much money in the shopping mall. She was spending so much money and she was about to stress her husband out. They were running into debt because every time she went to the store, she came back with a new dress, a new item, new piece of jewelry, particularly a new piece of clothing. And so the man was at his wit's end. He said, doctor, you've got to help me. The doctor couldn't go do anything, so he went to the preacher. Preacher, you've got to help me. My wife is spending money. She cannot resist buying new outfits every time she goes shopping. The preacher said, instinctively, it's the devil. It's the devil. It's the devil. And he said, tell me what happens with your wife. He said, well, she goes into the store. She tries on this outfit and in the dressing room. And as soon as she tries it on, she hears this voice in her ear that says, buy it, buy it, buy it. And she can't resist that voice. She ends up buying it. But pastor, we're going in so much debt. We cannot take it. If she doesn't stop spending, we're going to get evicted. We're not going to be able to pay our bills. We're not going to be able to make it. The pastor said, I got an answer for that. That devil is lying to her. He's convincing her to buy that outfit. You tell her the next time she gets in that store and that devil scream whispers in her ear, buy it, buy it, buy it. She responds to the devil, get thee behind me, Satan. And the man was excited. He said, this is wonderful. I finally found the cure for my wife's spending. It's the devil and we know what to do with the devil. So he went home, went over with, her, with his wife, told her exactly what to do. She was excited. She could still go shopping. She didn't have to worry about that voice convincing her because she knew what to do with that voice. So she headed out the very next day and went to shopping. And she found an outfit she liked. And sure enough, she took it to the dressing room and said, I'm going to try it on. I don't have to worry about buying it. It's the devil. I know what to do with the devil. The pastor has given me a credible answer for the devil. So might as well enjoy trying it on. She got back to the dressing room. She looked in the mirror. Oh, that outfit looked just like it was made to a T, especially for her. She tried on that outfit. And sure enough, you know what she heard. She heard that voice say, and immediately she thought of the pastor. She said, that's the devil. That's the devil. I know that's the devil. And so she said, get thee behind me, Satan. And she heard a voice say, it looks good from back here too. <laughs> so, so I won't tell you sometimes behind you is not the best place you want the devil. All right. We don't want him behind us tonight. We want him out of here. Amen. And uh, he is a loser. We're on the winning side. And I'm thrilled about what God is going to do in the service tonight. Thank you, Pastor, for providing a place for me to stay, being so kind. Thank you, Nikki, for working it all out, communicating it. Thank you for somewhere to sit up here tonight. Tremendous blessing. I would never, ever want to be an inconvenience or a burden to you here at Bible Baptist Church. If you're here tonight and you've got your Bibles, I want you to take them and open, with, open them with me to the book of 2 Kings chapter number 6. 
Would you go there with me in the word of God, 2 Kings chapter number 6. And I'm going to invite you, if you're physically able, to stand to your feet with me for the reading of God's word. 2 Kings chapter number 6. 2 Kings chapter number 6. Now I said stand to your feet with me. I've been saying that so many years. I ain't even standing, all right? Stand to your feet with each other if you're physically able. And if you're not, you're not going to offend me at all. 2 Kings chapter number 6. Is there a word from the Lord tonight for Bible Baptist Church? Is there a word from the Lord for every member standing or seated in the building tonight? I believe there is. And the sons of the prophet said unto Elisha, Behold, now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee, under Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make a place where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. Are we in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 4? So he went with them. When they came to Jordan, they cut down wood, but as one was felling a beam, the axe had fell into the water, and he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place. He cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee. And he put out his hand and took it. Let the church say amen. Our Father, we pray you add thy blessing to the reading of your word, for it is already blessed. As your vessel tonight, I'm asking you that you cleanse me of sin, empty me of self, and fill me with your spirit. Help me to be a blessing. Use the Bible as you have time and time again. Now, Lord, many have worked today. Many have labored today. Some have fought traffic. Some, some perhaps didn't even get a chance to go home. Many perhaps even had a chance to haven't had a chance to eat dinner yet. And yet because the pastor said, the church is meeting tonight and you ought to be here. Some people of God decided to show up. I believe that counts for something. Now, Lord, they've not labored and endeavored to be here tonight simply so that some man comes in tonight, whips out some sermon from a briefcase to impress them, gives them his best sugar stick so they can go home saying, wow, he can preach. We're not living in these last days in the midst of spiritual warfare needing a sermon from a briefcase. Oh, we need a word from the Lord. Amen. God, oh God, I need you. God, I need you. I can't help anybody here tonight, but I know you can. So Lord, do a work. Now about two hours down the road from here, where I live, I pray that you'll watch over my precious wife and my family and take me back home to them when I'm done here. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. I'm so glad I came to church tonight. 2 Kings chapter 6 is going to introduce us to this term the sons of the prophets. Let's say it together. The sons of the prophets. Come talk to me. The sons of the prophets. These were young men that were training under the tutelage of Elisha. Now, Elisha had trained under the tutelage of Elijah. So many people want the platform when they're not ready for it. They want the prestige when they're not ready for it. They want the spotlight when they're not ready for it. I never forget there was a man in my church years ago and he looked at me and said, Pastor, why don't you let me preach in the pulpit? And I looked at him and said, because they don't want to hear you. <laughs> the people of God are not guinea pigs while you try to figure out how to preach. These people are trying to keep their marriages together. They're trying to raise their children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. These single adults are trying to find God's choice of mate for, them life, for, their, for their lifetime. These folks are battling the devil. They're living in a perilous time. They're living in a society that can't figure out what a man is, what a woman is. And it's redefining marriage. And they're, they're young people that are trying to keep themselves pure in a day and age when three out of four seniors have graduated without their virginity. And 20% of 15-year-olds have been involved in immorality by the time they turn 15. And these smartphones will take them somewhere that are finite 
minds could never get to on their own. Sir, it is not my responsibility to put anybody up here because he wants to learn how to preach. God has called me as the pastor of Crossroads Baptist Church and my main priority is to feed the flock of God. I will not pass that opportunity every time I can on somebody else. I'll stand in my place and feed the flock of Almighty God. He left the church and the next thing he, I know, he was a Hebrew calling himself Ibrahim or something else. Let me tell you something. Some people want the spot, but they're not ready for it. Best thing you could ever do is wait your turn. Amen. I'm glad I had a daddy that trained me. I can remember daddy saying, let me get, daddy, let me get up there. Daddy said, you ain't ready yet, son. You ain't ready yet, son. Just sit down and listen. Just watch. For 10 years, Elisha poured water on the hands of Elijah. We never hear him preaching. We never see him do a miracle. We never see him making a, really making a comment. He just followed the man of God. And when the man of God was taken up, Elisha was there. And God gave Elisha a double portion of the power that he gave to Elisha. Elijah, twice the miracles that Elijah did, Elisha did. It pays to wait in line until God is ready. It doesn't mean you have to do nothing. It just means you're not doing what you're not supposed to do until God says you're ready. So Elisha's trained by Elijah, and now Elisha is training the sons of the prophets. In these last days, we need experienced people to train inexperienced people. Titus says the older women teach the younger women. The older men teach the younger men. That's God's pattern for life. Its pattern for life is that the older women teach the younger women and the older men teach the younger men. Why? Because if you get the older men teaching the younger women, you're bound to have some problems. Amen. You think God knew what he was talking about? Yeah, he does. He does. I, I'm always leery as a pastor of a lady. Say, Pastor, uh, Pastor, I need you to teach me. You need you to teach me to teach you. You're looking for something else besides teaching. God has given a plan for a woman to learn in church. The older women teach the younger women. I'm still preaching the Bible. Somebody say amen. amen. God knows what he's talking about. So these sons of the prophets are training on Elijah and they're learning. There's a problem though. The place where they're learning is not big enough. Look at the scripture. The place where we dwell, verse number one, is too straight for us. That simply means it's too small. We don't have enough room to get the job done. Now that's a problem. Raise your hand if you agree that's a problem. It's a problem if we're doing the work of God and we don't have a big enough place. So here's the request. Let us go, we pray thee, under Jordan. Can we go to Jordan? Can we take every single person, cut down beams or trees, and build a bigger place where we may dwell? Now here's a simple question tonight, church. Is it a good thing for those fellas to go build a bigger place to do the work of God? If you think it's a good thing for them to build a bigger place to do the work of God, somebody say amen. Now listen, folks are building bigger casinos, they're building bigger shopping malls, they're building bigger stadiums, they're building all kinds of bigger stuff to sin. Don't you think people ought to build bigger places to do the work of God? So, so listen, we've got a problem, Elisha. We need a bigger place to build to do what God has called us to do. It's a good thing to do it. May we go? Elisha says, sure you may go. Then another says to him, instead of just letting us go, how about you go with us? He said, I will go. Things are going well so far. So he goes with them. They're the Jordan, they go. Verse 5 says, but as one was felling a beam, now he's chopping down a tree. The Bible says his axe head fell into the water. Everybody say, oh boy. Now say amen if you think that's a bad thing. Now I want you to get this tonight. These fellas have gone to the Jordan River to do a good thing. Everybody with me say amen. And while they're trying to do a good thing, a bad thing happens. You still agree, say amen. Is it possible in life to be intending to do something good and while intending to do something good, something bad happens? If you agree with that, would you raise your hand? All right. This is what happens in 2 Kings chapter 6. These fellows are not down there playing hooky. They're not down there smoking. They're not down there drinking. They're not down there partying. They're not down there cussing. They're not down there running around. They're down there specifically to build a bigger place so they can do the work of God. Their intentions are good, but while their intentions are good, something happens in their life. A bad thing happens in the middle of trying to do a good thing. The axe head falls into the water. Now please listen. <laughs> this fella can't cut down a tree if he doesn't have an axe head. <laughs> now, let me tell you what he can do. He can keep swinging. Come on, he can swing. He can swing. He can swing. Yes, indeed. He can swing. Matter of fact, he can swing, make some noise. While he's oh. oh. He, listen, he can call Jehovah. Jehovah. 
Jehovah, listen, listen, watch this now. He can sweat. He can get tired. Watch this now. He can go back home and need to jump in the bathtub with Epsom salt and get rubbed down with some kind of substance because he's aching. But guess what? He has not accomplished anything just because he's tired because he can't expend his energy properly and effectively unless he's got an ax head. Now, if somebody agrees with me, then I say amen. amen. It's a bad thing. He's got to get it back. He's got to get it back. But this is basically impossible. Anybody ever heard of the Jordan River? <laughs> Just read one chapter before, and this is the same Jordan River that Naaman is told to dip into to be cured of his leprosy. Notice Naaman's response. He was hot, wroth, the scripture said. Surely Elisha was going to come out there and say some fancy word. Naaman said, I came all the way over here because I heard you were a prophet. Surely you were going to say, you got leprosy? Ha, uh, you need to get rid of it. Ha, and you want to get rid of a leprosy? Ha, let me get rid of your leprosy. Ha, and a, a boom, shaka, laka, laka, laka. That's what, that's, what, that's what Naaman's thinking. That's what Elisha's thinking. That's what Naaman's thinking Elisha's going to say. And instead, Elisha says, Servant, go tell him to dip in the Jordan River. The Jordan River was a smelly river. It was a stinky river. It overflowed often. It was a muddy river. You could not see the bottom of the Jordan River. And so Naaman's thinking, do you know who I am? I'm a captain. You sending me to dip in that river? How about Abana? How about Farfar? He's listing all the nice rivers. Can I dip in the Jordan River? Excuse me. If you need God to fix your problem, stop telling him how to do it. <laughs> the Jordan River. Now, chapter number six, there's an ax head in the Jordan River. Listen to me. All the search teams in the area are not going to locate this ax head. This guy wants to get it back, but he has no way to get it back. Now, let me tell you about the end of the story. Watch this now. He got it back. Yeah, that, that was a chance. That was a, that was a good spot for you to say amen. Now, let's go back and do it again. Now, watch this. Let me tell you the end of the story. He got it back. He needed it back. But why? Because, because he really, really, really wanted to get the job done. He really, really, really wanted to chop down trees. He really, really, really wanted to be involved in a good work. He really, really, really wanted to help build that place so he could train. He didn't go down to the Jordan River to sit around and watch people. He didn't go down to the Jordan River to chill. He didn't go down to the Jordan River on a sabbatical. He didn't go down on the Jordan River for a sick day. He didn't go down to the Jordan River just to sit back in a hammock. He went to the Jordan River to work. So if he went to work and he doesn't have an axe head, he needs to get an axe head back. And I'm telling you, it's good news that he got it back. Now you say, what in the world has that got to do with us on a Monday night? I'm telling you, if you're here tonight at Bible Baptist Church on a Monday night without knowing what's going on in your life, where you're from, what your background is, what you did all day long, I'd like to go out on a limb and I don't think it's hard to go out on this one. For you to be in church tonight is a good thing. You're here tonight because you want to live for God. You want to serve God. You want your marriage to work. You want your kids to be raised up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You want to find God's mate for your life. You want to have a good testimony in your life. You want to live according to God's will and way. You want your thought life to be pure. You want your family to be a family that's built on Christian values. You're here tonight because in 2022, you want to do a good thing. But folks, just because you want to do a good thing doesn't mean that bad things don't happen. And we've got to admit tonight on a Monday night that while trying to do good things, there have been some bad things that have happened. Some of us in our lives, we've lost our fire, lost our zeal, lost our joy, lost our excitement. We've been hurt by somebody. We've gone through a difficulty. We've got some bitterness, some grudges, maybe some unforgiveness, or, or just we got distracted in our priorities. This last couple years of pandemic has caused a lot of people to reveal just where they are with Almighty God. And many have slowed down. Some recovered from COVID, but they did didn't recover from carnality. The doctor says, I have long COVID. Some people have long carnality. It happened way back then, but the effects are still lingering. Listen, 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 listen. I tell our people all the time, don't you start listening to this message and start thinking about everybody, in here, everybody not in here that needs this message. Boy, oh, pastor, you preaching, you ain't just about 10 minutes in. I, I sure wish brother so-and-so was here. No, no, you are brother so-and-so. 
It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. I didn't come here tonight to get something from somebody. I came here to get something for me. Amen. You're here tonight. It's me, it's me, oh Lord, me, oh Lord standing in the need of prayer. And I'm here tonight to talk to a body of believers who thought enough of God and enough of the things of God and the word of God to sit here in this building on a, sun, on a Monday night after work tomorrow and work today and work tomorrow and everything that's going on in your life. Could it be that God has brought you here because you've lost your cutting edge? Don't worry about You're still swinging because you're at church tonight. You're swinging. You're swinging. You say, I'm going to church. I'm singing in the choir. I'm reading my Bible. I'm, I'm doing some stuff. I'm tired. I'm worn out. I'm engaged in spiritual warfare. Yeah, but you ain't cutting nothing down. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Going through the motions. Oh, I read my Bible every day. The question is, does it read you? God, God didn't bring you here tonight to punch the clock. God didn't bring you here tonight to impress the pastor. God brought you here tonight to get your cutting edge back. And I'm here to take, listen, you say it's a crazy world. This is a crazy world. It's hard to serve God in 2022. It's never been easy to serve God. This is the hardest time it's ever been to serve God. It was hard for Noah. It was hard for Adam. Wasn't nobody there but him and his wife. <laughs> he didn't have no TV. He didn't have a flesh, a sinful flesh. And he still couldn't do it. Do you think there's ever going to be a time on planet Earth where it's going to be easy to serve God? It's not easy, but I tell you, it's possible. I t it's possible. And maybe you're here tonight and you've thrown your hands up and say, I'm just never going to get back to where I was. Where I'll never get on fire for God. I'll just try to survive. No, 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 no. God didn't want you to survive. He wants you to thrive. I'm here to tell you as dirty as the Jordan River was, that fella got his ax head back. And as crazy as the world is tonight, you man, you woman, you boy, you girl, you members of Bible Baptist Church can leave this building tonight not just with an ax, not just with a swing, but with an ax head. You can go out in this crazy world with a lying devil a wicked world and a wayward flesh and still get the job done because God is able. Somebody say amen to that. Now I want to preach tonight how you can get it back. You want it? Come on, let's just, let's, let's let our hair down. Now. You want it? I'm going to tell you how you can get it. I'm just one of these kind of just keep it real preachers because nobody needs a bunch of fakeness in the pulpit. huh? We need to be real with each other. We're going through it. This is a spiritual battle. But I'm here to tell you the Bible's a book of good news. Now, let's look at this story tonight. How do you get your ax head back? First of all, it's going to require a sober reaction, if you're taking notes tonight. A sober reaction. Verse 5, but as one was felling a beam, please look in your Bible with me because I'll ask you to talk to me. The ax head fell into the water. Okay, are you there in verse number 5? Now, read with me the next three words. And he what? Say it again. He didn't, he didn't mutter, he didn't utter, he didn't sigh, he cried. Sober reaction. No, 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 what did he cry? He cried and said, the next word? Alas, everybody say alas. Now this is, if you're taking notes tonight, alas is an archaic word. It, it indicates grief, pity, and concern. This is a word we really don't use today, but it was a familiar word back then. And in other words, when he lost that ax head and screamed, alas, he was saying, this is bad. This bothers me. This grieves me. This concerns me. This is something that hits me. This sober reaction was first of all made up of a broken spirit. He was broken that he lost his ax head. It bothered him that he lost his ax head because after all, without his ax head, his purpose for being there could not be accomplished. Listen to me. Please listen to me tonight. When you lose your zeal, you lose your fire, you lose your joy, you lose your excitement, you use your dream. You lose your drive for Almighty God. I'll tell you what the first step in getting it back is. You must have a sober reaction, a broken spirit. You'll never get your ax head back if it doesn't bother you that you lost it. Come on now. I need to lose weight. You ain't lose weight if it don't bother you. Come on. I just, I'm late all the time. You ain't going to be on time if it doesn't bother you being late. It's got to break our spirit. It's got to break our spirit. God, I don't read my Bible like I used to. I don't, I don't 
pray like I used to. I don't tithe like I used to. I don't come to church like I used to. I don't think right like I used to. Our, our marriage is not what it used to be. I'm not right with my parents like I used to. I'm not right with my pastor like I used to. I tolerate gossip more than I used to. I watch mute movies with, with profanity more than I used to. When you lose something, the first thing you ought to cry is, alas, there was a broken spirit. Notice, if you would, there was a blundered stewardship. He not only says, alas, master, for it was borrowed. Um, alas, master. But notice he says, for it was borrowed. Say that with me. For it was borrowed. Listen, it's a bad thing when you lose anything. It's a worse thing than what you lose is somebody else's. Huh? Oh, boy. I done lost that axe here. Watch this now. Let's speak 22, 2022 language. And it ain't even mine. <laughs> if you're black, and it ain't even mine's. All right. <laughs> What, 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 what's, what's wrong with losing something that's not yours? Well, first of all, there's an idle consequence. If I don't have the ax here, I can't do any work. I'm sitting here down here to do a job that I can't do because I can't do it with, I'm just idle, have an idle consequence. If I lose the ax head, what about the intended care of the ax head? It was loaned to me with a purpose of intention of being taken care of. In other words, when somebody lets you use something else of theirs, they expect you to take care of it. So there's an idle consequence. There's an intended care. But watch this now. Here's the toughest one. There's an inevitable conclusion. Here's the inevitable conclusion. I got to go back and look at that guy that loaned me that axe head. And what am I going to say to that man when he goes, how was it? How was the weather? It was nice. How was the trip? It was nice. How were the trees? It was nice. How was the building y'all built? It's real nice. How was the fellowship? It was nice. How was the meal they served you? It was nice. How was my axe head? Uh, what had happened? Well, uh, uh, listen, listen, what am I going to do when I've got a face? that owner and tell him what you loan me I don't have anymore. That's blundered stewardship because stewardship means I take care of something else that someone else owns in a way that they would be pleased. Watch this now. Alas, master, for it was borrowed. Here's what ought to bother us when we lose our axe head. A broken spirit and a blundered stewardship. You see, the axe head that you and I have, we didn't get from ourselves. We got from Almighty God. What know you not your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Then you what you have of God and you're not your own for you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is a reasonable service. In him we live we breathe and we have our being. I'm persuaded that neither death nor light nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. I am crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ lives within me and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. I know in whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. See my time, my talent and my treasure, they don't belong to Kenny Baldwin. They belong to Almighty God and when I lose my access I've got an idle consequence. I can't do what I was called to do. When I lose my accent, I've misplaced my intended care. He expected me to take care of my life and I've not done it. But when I lose my axe head, I've got an inevitable consequence. For we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. I've got to face the man that gave it to him, gave it to me. And what am I going to say to my Savior when, I, when he says to me, I loved you, I saved you, I redeemed you, I cleansed you, I adopted you, I called you to preach and you didn't use your life for me. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to get your axe head back because you don't want to face Jesus without it. Amen. It's a broken spirit and a blundered stewardship. See, in order to get your axe head, you need a sober reaction. Number two, you need a strategic return. Hmm. A strategic return. Uh, don't, don't notice what the Bible says. And the man of God said, Y'all see that in verse number six? And the man of God said, here's what I call accepted support. Now watch this. This fellow lost his accent. You know what he had to realize? If I'm going to get it back, I need some help. You know what's wrong with most Christians? We don't want to admit we need help. But brother, 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 I haven't seen you at church in a while. I sure would like to talk. Oh, no, I don't need nobody to talk to me. I'm doing just fine. No, you're not. Who are you fooling? 
No, you're not. Listen, listen, somebody could be sitting in the building tonight. You're on the verge of walking away from God. You're on the, your marriage is on the verge of falling apart. Maybe there's a young person in the building tonight. You're on the verge of falling into a mess that will make you regret it for the rest of your life. You need to accept support. Nobody does it by himself. Go to the preacher. Go to a friend. Go to your parent. Go to a counselor. Get down on your knees. But for heaven's sake, quit getting in a problem that you can't solve and turning down Accepted support, the man of God said. <laughs> My wife and I were talking the other day. I meet couples all the time. Pastor, we just need, we need some counseling for our marriage. We, we, we just, we just falling apart. Well, sister, I didn't see you at Sunday school. We got a couples class. Why in the world should I provide for you private counseling for you and your husband when you won't come to the general counseling at Sunday school? Shame on the, on the church member that wants the pastor to come meet with them on a Thursday that won't come to church on a Wednesday. I'm not trying to get in your business. I'm just trying to get all up in your business. I'm trying to tell you that there's so much counseling you get from the pulpit that it most of the time will keep you from needing most of it in the office. Amen. My wife said to me yesterday, you ought to make it a requirement, honey. That's a good idea, honey. <laughs> Most of the time we need counseling because we missed class. Accept his support. Now listen to the response from Elisha. Three words. Where fell it? <laughs> I don't read the Bible because the Bible doesn't make any sense. Read this. I don't ever, I don't, how does this not make sense? You lost something and the response from the person that said you lost it to says, where did you lose it? Well, that's good advice, isn't it? Now, pastor, you were here with me tonight. When you first saw me tonight, where'd you see me? Okay, up the sidewalk. We came into the building. Did you take me anywhere else in the building? Okay, came right in here. Only place I've been. And then to auditorium yes. since I came to go. So if I leave, left, got out of service tonight, and I said, preach, I can't find my phone. You think we should go look in your office? <laughs> For my phone? Do you have an office? I do. Would you mind me going in there? Go I mean, is it absolutely filthy? You don't want me to go look at it? or anything? <laughs> You don't mind me going in there? But it doesn't make any sense, right? Y'all have bathrooms in this building? Yes, sir. Bathrooms. You mean you actually have a church with bathrooms? One for the men, one for the women. You expect each respective group to go in the proper one. Can I get amen? amen? Would it make sense for me to go look for my phone in the bathroom? Why? I never went there. <laughs> Pastor, I don't have any joy anymore. Did you have joy when you were reading your Bible? Yes. Then stop playing the lottery and read your Bible. Me, me and my wife, we just don't have anything in common anymore. Did you have something in common where both of y'all got, got off of your blessed assurance, amen, and came to church together? I hear husband, we don't have anything in common. Come sit in the same church service and go home and you have that in common? Well, my kids and I don't have anything to talk about. Bring them with you. Please tell me. If you lost your axe head doing the work of God, why wouldn't you go back to the work of God when you want to find it? I don't know what's wrong with my finances. They're just all out of whack. I can't pay my bills. I don't have enough money. I got more going out than what's coming in. Did you have enough when you were tithing? Well, yes, Pastor. Start tithing again. Where fell it? Folks, folks, we need, we, we need a strategic return. We want our axe heads back tonight. We need to go back to the place where we last had it. The acknowledged spot and the accepted support. Last point and I'm finished. I want your axe head back. It's going to take a sober reaction. It's going to take a strategic return. Number three, it's going to take a supernatural remedy. Watch this now. You've been, you're going to get it back. It's going to take a God thing. God's got to do it. Listen, you're going to get them back on fire for God. You can't get slapped by a preacher. Listen to me. You can't listen. It ain't going to take an episode of Dr. Phil or Oprah. You don't need somebody to shake your hand. You don't need a check in the mail. You don't need an appointment with a psychiatrist. You're going to get your fire back from God. God's got to do it. 
Watch this supernatural remedy. Now, after he showed him the place where it fell, verse number six, look at verse number six. He cut down a stick. Now, this supernatural remedy is going to require some remarkable power. <laughs> remarkable power. In an unlikely method, we should have known that from chapter five, unlikely go dip in the Jordan River. Now, watch unlikely in chapter six, cut down a stick. What? Cut down a stick? What happened to Avra Cadaver? Cut down a stick. Unlikely. Boy, wasn't God in the business of unlikely methods? He meets a blind man. Oh, surely you're going to say some fancy word. No, no, no. Give me some dirt and some spit. Don't try this at home. But it worked. I wonder why Jesus used unlikely methods. Because he wanted to get our mind off the method and get our mind on the miracle worker. If we're not careful, we'll start sizing God up and, and making some big to do about what God's going to do. I need a revival. Boy, Pastor, I sure wish you'd get those ladies to sing my favorite song. I need to hear it this morning. You don't need your favorite song. You just need to get along with God. God ought to be your favorite voice. Sometimes it's not in the big stuff. Sometimes it's just cutting on a stick. An unlikely method. And then notice this. An undeniable miracle. Come on, don't, don't take my word for it. Don't, don't ever take a preacher's word for it. Okay? You ought to, any preacher that doesn't want you to check his words by the Bible is not a good preacher. Now check me now. Look at verse 6. And he cut down a stick and cast it in thither. That means he cut the stick down and threw it in the water. Look at the last statement. Read it with me. And the iron did swim. Say it again. And the iron did swim. Could I reprimand all of us as Christians tonight for just a moment? Stop reading the Bible like the stuff that happened in the Bible happens all the time. Have you ever seen iron swim? You know what? You know what's wrong with us, preacher? We're so familiar with the Bible, we forget these things don't happen. Have you ever seen a man? I'm talking about a man. About, 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 about 80 some years old walk up to a big body of water and put a stick out in front of it. And all of a sudden, part of the body of water goes whoosh and part of the other body goes whoosh. And then about two million people walk across, not on slushy ground, but dry ground. That don't happen. That's a miracle. Huh? I said, that's a miracle. You ever seen a bunch of people walk, walk around the city seven times, don't say nothing, and on the seventh day, shout to the Lord, and all of a sudden, walls start tumbling down? If, if that happened every day, I guarantee you, we'd be winning some wars like that. Amen. And there'll be some people to get on my nerves. I'll be walking around their house seven times. All right. Let's just keep it real, all right? You, you ever seen a woman have a, have, a, have a disease for 12 years and crawl her way through a crowd and get to another man and touch the bottom? I'm not dap him up, not shake his hand, not get slapped upside the head, not get him to sell, not him to sell her a bottle of his perspiration, but touch the hem of his garment and immediately she's here. Somebody ought to say, man, what God does, Muhammad don't do, Buddha don't do, Mary don't do, the Pope don't do, the priest don't do, the preachers don't do, the cow that used to be your grandma, she don't do it either. Listen to me. Only God does it. The iron swim. Let's get, let's get back to getting amazed at God. The iron did swim. It's an undeniable miracle. Hey, hey, listen. There's no way that guy could have found that exit. Watch this now. God found it. Can you serve God in 2022? Can you be what God wants you to be through the Bible Baptist Church or whatever church you serve? Can God take you to the next level spiritually? Well, it's too hard, Pastor. It's never been you. It was too hard to save yourself. God saved you. It's too hard to serve God in 2020. Let me tell you something. God will find that fire in the middle of a crazy society like he found that ax head in the middle of the Jordan River. Stand back and watch God do what he does. The remarkable power. And I close with this, the responsible person. Now, what's this guy going to do after God finds that ax head? Well, number one, he's got to realize the availability. Then said he, take it up to thee. Look, 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 buddy. It's swimming. Watch, watch this now. That thing that was lost has been found. Hey, you've got to believe sitting in church on a Monday night that everything God has for you is found. It's available. 
Fella, look here, fella. If God called you to preach and you quit three years ago, guess what? He can still use you. God can bring it up again. Amen. Put your marriage back together again. You've got to realize the availability. Then you've got to have what I call reaching accessibility. Reaching accessibility. Take it to thee. In other words, Elisha says, hey, man, man, there it is. Take it, take it, take it, take it. There it is. Take it, take it, take it. But then I want you to notice the next verse. And he, next phrase. And he put out his hand. Everybody in the building, put your hand out. Put your hand out. Come on. <laughs> now, now, please tell me, what does this mean when you put your hand out? Huh? Yeah. Say it again. You want something. Huh? All, every parent knows what this means. <laughs> and once in a while you go like this. Get that thing out my face. <laughs> hey, not only do you want something, watch this now, this means you're what? Need and what else? You're expecting it. You wouldn't put your hand out if you didn't expect somebody to put, put something in it. Watch this now. If you put your hand out to give somebody give you five and they don't do it, we call it they did what? They left you hanging. In other words, I was expecting you to do something and you didn't. Watch this now. I won't tell you when he put his hand out, there was an expectation in this fella. In other words, he expected something to be placed in his hand. He expected to take something. Could be two people walk out this this meeting, Monday and Tuesday. Maybe two people walk out Bible Baptist Church on a regular service. One of them says, man, I'm glad I went to church. Boy, God met with me. Did you hear them ladies singing about the stone was rolled away forever? He's lifted up, magnified. Boy, that sure did something to my heart. Did you hear that preacher? He talked kind of fast, a little funny. But God spoke to me. I'm ready to serve. I'm so ready to serve God. I'm ready to charge hell with a super soaker. <laughs> Somebody standing right beside him walks out the same service. I ain't getting nothing. I, I ain't get, ma, 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 matter of fact, I didn't even come to the revival because I've been to that church before and I never get anything out of the message. Matter of fact, that's why I stopped going because you don't, I, 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 I got to go find me a church where I can get something out of the message. Let me tell you something. You can go to Jesus Christ Baptist Church where Jesus is the pastor. You still ain't going to get nothing if you don't put your hand out. You better quit blaming the preacher, quit blaming the Bible, quit blaming God, and quit blaming everybody else while your Christian life isn't growing. It ain't growing because the food's getting handed out and you don't put your hand out. Stop telling everybody you're hungry when you went to an all-you-can-eat place. If you're still hungry, that's mean you didn't put nothing on your plate. Now listen here tonight. I wonder who came to this meeting tonight with your hand out. I need something. I need something. Realized availability, reaching accessibility. Watch this now. Receiving actuality. The Bible said he took it. Everybody say he took it. He took it. Hey, hey, hey. In a few moments, you're going to have a chance to come to this altar. You come get what you need. Well, Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. God does. Come get it. Come get it. You, you, are, you are as good as a Christian as you want to be. Come get it. Realized availability. Reaching accessibility. Receiving actuality. And here's the fourth one. It's assumed. It's assumed, but I don't believe I'm being extra biblical. Resumed activity. You say it's not in the text. Well, common sense. If he went to the Jordan to chop down trees, if he lost his axe head and he couldn't chop down trees, then it just goes to assume that if he got the axe head back, guess what he started doing? Chopping down trees again. Here's what I'm asking you. If God does a work in your heart tonight, will you get back to work? See, see, God doesn't give you an ax head back so you can post it on social media and go, look what I just got back. See how many likes I can get. See, that's the problem. We want likes. We don't serve God for likes. We serve God for well done. Will you start swinging again?
doesn't matter how hard you want to do good. Sometimes bad things happen. I just believe we're here tonight for a reason. God still has a work for Bible Baptist Church in York, PA. And guess what? You're in it. You say, well, I'm just here visiting tonight. Well, if you're in a church, God's got to work for you. Well, I don't have a church. You need to get in one. I tell, I tell a group of people sitting in my church last Friday in the funeral. I said, you need to get in a local New Testament church. You do not have to be in a church to go to heaven. If, you're going to, if you got saved, you're going to heaven. Listen, every saved person is on the plane, and every saved person on the plane is on a plane that will arrive in heaven. Here's the difference. Every saved person is on the plane, but those in a good local church are in first class. Everybody on the plane in coach and first class will get to the same destination, but the ride's going to be different in first class than it was in coach. Can, I, can somebody help me preach? I'm trying to close this message, but I'm feeling good right about now. Whew. Well, I could eat a couple pieces of fried chicken with some crack seasoning on them. My brother from another mother right there knows what I'm talking about. You want to fly first class? You don't have to come to the altar if you're saved tonight to get saved. But you ought to be tired of sitting in the back of the plane next to the, next to the wings making all that noise or next to the bathroom <laughs> feeling every bump on the plane. Living off of peanuts in a drink when you could be in the front getting unlimited snacks. Don't blame the preacher. Don't blame your husband. That blame and stuff started at the, in the garden. Still going on today. I'm not growing. I'm not growing. How can, I, I told somebody, how can you be in this church where we preach from the Bible every service three times a week and you're not growing? If I wasn't growing in a church that preached the Bible three times a week, I wouldn't tell nobody. Because <laughs> that means you're mighty lazy. Because you can't grow from the Bible and that means the Bible is being served don't blame your mama if you're hungry if she put food on the table. It's up to you to put it in your mouth. Now, I'm preaching to all of us tonight. Maybe some of you say, I, I, I still got my accent. Is it dull? How about this? Is it loose? How many more swings will it take before it flies into the water? You better make a move tonight. Let's do business with God. Because the good news, 2 Kings chapter 6, even if you lose it, in Jesus' name, you can get it back. Our Father, this is the message you have me had on my heart tonight. Now I'm praying for your people. Heads bowed, eyes closed, no one looking around. How many you say tonight? Pastor, I'm saved and I know it. I have Bible reasons to prove it. I'm saved and I know it. I have Bible reasons to prove it. I'm going to heaven. Put your hand up all over the building. I'm going to heaven. All right. You're saved and you know it. You're going to heaven. Now, if you just raise your hand, put it back down. Pastor, I'm saved and I know it. But God spoke to me tonight. I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not saying you living out in sin and cutting the food. I'm just saying God spoke to me tonight and you say, and, and I, need to get, I need to get on more on fire. I need to be sharper. I need my cutting edge. God spoke to me. God said something to me in the message tonight. If that's you, would you put your hand up? Now, many have already come to the altar. In just a moment, I'm going to ask every single one of you, if you're serious about to come to the altar, if you're physically able to come. Last question. You say, Pastor, I'm not sure if I died tonight, I'd go to heaven, but I don't want to go to hell. I'm not sure if I died tonight, I'd go to heaven, but I'm sure I don't want to go to hell. Please pray for me. Anybody like that? Would you let me pray for you? I'm not sure if I die tonight, I'd go to heaven, but I'm sure I don't want to go to hell. Put your hand up. God bless you. God bless you. I appreciate you being honest, young person. Anyone else? Put your hand up. I'm not sure if I die tonight, I'd go to heaven, but I'm sure I don't want to go to hell. In just a moment, if you put your hand up and said you're not sure you're going to heaven, we want you to come and let somebody take a Bible. He said, walk up there to those people. Listen, we're talking heaven and hell, folks. We're not talking about baked or fried, sweet or unsweetened. We're talking heaven or hell. 
Don't stay in your seat just a moment. Stand up all over the room. Lord, I pray you bless this invitation. Move like only you can in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you put your hand up, you're a Christian. Come on. If you said God spoke to me tonight, why don't you come find a place on the altar? Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's not wait. Good night. God's moving tonight. Praise his name. If you're not sure you're going to heaven, you put your hand up a moment ago, let us get somebody to help you tonight. Praise his name. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh God, I need you. If you put your hand up tonight and said you're not sure you're going to heaven, even if you're on the altar tonight, would you put your hand up even from where you are? If you put your hand up and said, I'm not sure if I died today, I'd go to heaven, but I don't want to go to hell. Slip your hand up even from where you are tonight, if that's you. If you're out in the pews tonight and you're not sure you're going to heaven, would you come out and let us show you? Step out of your seat. What's the hold up? Where the hold up? Come to this altar with your hand out tonight. Oh God, I need you. There was one of those two here. The young people. We out here desperate, folks. I want to tell you something. This church loves you. We don't want anybody to leave here tonight not sure you're going to heaven. If you never come back here, we want you to go there. The best day down here is nothing compared to a day up there.